keep you at relatively low speeds? Well, relatively low speeds, but way better than wagons on gravel. Or yeah, mud. See, if your competing it. technology is wagons on gravel. Or mud. Okay, if you think about it, the or mud. difference between um, a mile and a half an hour and 35 miles an hour is amazing. Well, I thought you could get 35 just to 10. We'll take Even five. Ten. Okay, but also looking at all the issues that are were had over the years was trying to standardize rail. If we start out <laughs> one, that's going to be the standard for a long time. Yeah. We, remember, we have examples of standard rail that are used for heavy haul lines for the pole, plug for the pole mine and other things from day one. We have standard rail, and that's in the series. This is for places where the uh, economics are marginal. Okay. Okay. Wales, this, yeah. As I said, this wasn't introduced until 1927, or 1907, rather. And even then, it was primarily oxen power. Do you got a picture of the German engine? I do. Cool. Hey, shoot. <laughs> so, let me just, uh, one thing, too, because it, it becomes relevant with, uh, with lighter than air technology. Which will get to Which will get, I know. But the thing is that, that, that if you're moving freight, it's different if you're moving people. That speed starts becoming a really big issue. If you're moving freight, it's really not. Uh, the average speed of American freight trains today is, I think, not much more than 30 miles an hour yeah. on average. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really, really mm -hmm. slow. But it doesn't matter because from the point of view of most of what's being shipped, if it takes seven days to get across the continent instead of four days, who cares? It's just, who cares? Because especially once the pipeline starts, it just doesn't mm -hmm. matter. And it's the same way we'll get to later on when you're, you know, if you start hauling stuff using a dirigible, all right, you're going 20 miles an hour on average. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It, you're like, still going faster than ground you're still going transportation. Faster than and when, you, when the issue is regular logistical supply, whether that's commercial or military, the issue really is there's a lower threshold of speed you want to achieve, but once you've achieved that speed, the issue is reliability. Exactly. And what and what this is an issue is whether independent transportation, because the mud on the roads doesn't bother you, you can just roll. Yeah, even for the even for the outrigger wheel, all you got to do is run a, a strip of gravel or a foot wide, or a piece of or, or a piece of wood. Yeah. Or so you know you can just it's cheap. Right. Okay, you think Scotsmen are cheap? Welshmen are really cheap. They're my family. <laughs> I know. And and you have two rails. There you go. Yeah. Um, okay. So in 1925, two years before they discontinued this thing. They bought four steam locomotives from a company in Germany that they commissioned special built. To replace and, uh, the oxen. To replace, to replace the oxen and the, fa and the largely failed little experiment you saw with the guy with the motor. Um, and you can see how the steam engine is nicely, carefully centered on the rail with the outrigger. And um, what's cool about this picture is this was taken very recently. If you're at the Indian National <coughs> Railway Museum outside Delhi. You can take a ride on the on monorail. The last remaining viewing system monorail in the world. It will cost you 15 rupees. Um, Which I think is substantially less than one cent. Yeah, something. Anyway. Um, okay, so changing, changing subjects. Um, I have um, I have a piece of plywood up here. You do. You saw it. <laughs> it goes um, like this. Can you lift it up, or will that? I'll lift it up. No, it's fine. I'll lift it people up. In back probably I'll lift can't. it up. But I was going to talk first. Um, so we've had a problem in the 1632 series with whenever somebody wanted to make steam engines out. In the economy. In the economy. Away from Grantville, away from Mannington, where the machine shops were and the knowledge was and all of that. The Americans. The Americans were. Every time somebody wanted to make a steam engine out there somewhere, we've had people who participate in our forums and who send us emails and who make comments on the blogs, and they say, oh, no, blacksmiths couldn't do that. Blacksmiths can do that. Yeah, blacksmiths can do that. But 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 still, 
So there's a difference between an efficient steam engine and a steam engine that's good enough to do the job. Does that make sense? Okay. And blacksmiths are pretty amazing. The issue with building a steam engine out there was never that the blacksmiths couldn't do the work. It's that he's going to have to give up a long piece of time during which he isn't making hinges and door nails. knobs and nails, nails and nails shoes and 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 because it takes a lot of hours to make a steam engine, right? But the question, could someone make a steam engine out there if they wanted to, kept coming up and people kept saying, oh no, I mean, so in preparation for the con this year, I set myself a task. I said, let's make the crappiest steam engine Ugly. that I can. <laughs> Ugly steam engine. Okay, really bad steam engine. I mean, not just bad, but really bad. Ugly, ugly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so that was the goal. You okay, are, you and, and I think I succeeded. But that. let me tell you, this is the fourth try. The first three were a little worse and didn't actually run. Okay. <laughs> Um, so this is the fourth try, and how many of you actually know how a steam engine works? Because I'm going to tell you in two minutes if you don't. Okay, cool. Then I'm going to explain it. Um, you see the cylinder, right? Okay. And you see the piston that comes up and down in the cylinder, right? So when the air gets pushed into the cylinder, it pushes the piston Steam. Down. Makes sense? Steam. Whatever. A gas. Gets pushed into the cylinder, pushes the piston out. That makes sense? Okay, and when it pushes the piston out, it turns the crank and causes things to happen. There's another crank over here that's set 90 degrees off from that one. See it? So that one's flat, this one's sticking out. Okay, and it's just hooked up to a piece of wire that's hooked up over here. The other thing I did was build it so I could take it apart. Um, <laughs> Um, this is a chunk from a piece of plastic coat hanger. I did say I would, you remember the standard that we were building towards, right? Um, it's quite so, ugly, but it works. Yeah, exactly. So when, see the hole? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when it's in this position here, the hole lines up with the hole going through that way. And air, <laughs> steam, whatever, can go up and push the cylinder out. And then, you probably can't see, but the back side of this is stepped. There's a half step. And so when it's in this position, the hole doesn't line up, but the air, steam, whatever, can get out the back so that there's an escape route, right? So we stick that back in there. We stick, um, we hook the coat hanger wire back up. The other standard, by the way, that I was building towards was to buy absolutely nothing. So Every this was all built from things that happened to be lying in my basement, except I had to buy a tube of JB Weld. But other than that, um, so. Some of us still have JB Weld laying around the house. Well, yeah, but anyway, so, well, mine was, my JB Weld wouldn't. Open, so it had hardened. So, yeah. um, so anyway, it had so welded. That's, so you see the idea, okay? Now, we're going to talk in a couple of minutes about boilers, okay? <laughs> but I'm going to tell you right now that he's going to talk in a couple of minutes about boilers. But boilers are horrifically, hideously dangerous things. I mean, like boiler, even little boilers kill people, okay? Because when water turns to steam, when water turns to steam, it expands a thousand. A, a, more than a thousand times. Yes. yes. So more than a factor of more than a thousand. So if with one gallon of water, you have a thousand gallons gallon of steam. Of steam. So our one gallon boiler would produce steam ten feet by ten feet by ten feet. And in doing that, you can imagine the bits and pieces of the boiler go out at incredible speeds. Well, it's and rapid. the steam is hot, and it displaces oxygen, and... There's all sorts of problems. Yes. And people die, <clears throat> Not from little tiny boilers. So, we're going to be de I'm going to be demonstrating this engine, and I'm going to be using a boiler 
built by the shop vac company. <laughs> okay? Um, and so... Um, so this is steam in, in, in a virtual sense. Well, but see, the cool part about that is mm -hmm. a gas is a gas is a gas. Who right. cares, right? Okay? A gas is a gas. It doesn't matter. Um, although I will admit that if I were to run hot steam through the piece of 2x4 that's my valve body, it probably wouldn't last a real long time. But it would run for a while, at least. Um, so, anyway, on to the demonstration. Bear with me if it takes a minute, okay? Because honestly, remember the standard. This was the worst steam engine I could build that actually worked. And so, actually worked is kind of one of those statements where sometimes you have to fuss with it for a minute. So this is like when the government designs a project. <laughs> yes, he's, he's the lowest bidder. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. I'm trying to film a steam engine here. It is the worst boiler. I've just offended the steam guy. I'm running this on suction. Backwards. Backwards. Okay? Nothing is fun. What? Nothing is fun. Right. Nothing sucks. Okay, fine. I'm running this on the displacement of air from the piston. Okay. <laughs> I saw the video of this. Would you agree that that can't possibly still be going from my flipping it with my finger? Thanks! never going to make an energizer commercial, but... <laughs> it doesn't seem likely. Um, oh, man. It, okay. it sucks too much. It sucks too much. Uh, <laughs> wow. Okay. We're gonna. All right. I'm in trouble now. Yeah, there you are. I brought chocolate. <laughs> You're gonna have to keep saying that. Uh, we um. So we're correct in saying it blows. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's it's it's. it's Actually, uh, it sucks at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For that. For that grammatical meaning of the word suck, okay? Uh, so in any event, um, I thought that was fun, and so that's why I did it. And that was my big demonstration for the day. Um, I have, however, had a couple people have accused me of lying. I, I don't know why. Um, <laughs> Because and, you and write they, fiction for a living. Because I write fiction. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, so those people that accused me of that suggested that this was the best craftsmanship I was capable of. <laughs> <laughs> and that the rest of my story was just a story to explain the fact that I built a really crappy steam engine, right? So um, just to show you, and see now for the embarrassing part, the one I'm going to show you in a moment looked a lot nicer um, two hours before we left for the con on Thursday morning. And then in trying to pack it in the trunk of the car, I snapped off the input pipes and the solder got broken off. So the, the alternate steam engine has the two input pipes held on with JB Weld. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, but it's perhaps pretty. Perhaps they were right. This is the best practice.